going Mm -hmm. from your previous comments i'll keep it incredibly short but uh yeah no the 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 video is really good and it's self-explanatory it is the business story um i think really the one of the punchlines which does go over i just wanted to highlight is it totally explains that from 2013-14 when they had 70 percent of their contact was over the phone uh by a series of of measures um they reduced that down to 30 percent by 2019-20 uh now covid of course uh, it was through a number of plans out of the way and they had to react to that and they did use the infrastructure to uh, react to that as well but i do think that that is a a real success story and i just wanted to highlight that transition the other thing that i wanted to point out uh, is that although quite a lot of what tony says is about efficiency uh, one of the points that's stressed in many meetings that we go to is retaining the human touch. So yes, there's automation. Yes, a chatbot is part of uh, that automation. However, um, at every point in the customer journey, the customer can just say, right, I want to chat with an agent now. I want to talk to somebody there now. So uh, pick up, up, I think uh, Jamie Davis pointed out that, uh, you know, chatbots great if, customers getting frustrated then uh you know they immediately chat to an agent and i think that's really uh the only points i wanted to pick up for going into the video i have got some of the stats because tony halfway through says that uh, in this video she doesn't present too many stats so i can show you some of the stats after the video if that would be helpful so Everybody loves you, stats, Nick. Tim, don't they? Everyone loves stats, uh, as long as they're meaningful. Um, as long as they're meaningful. Well, excellent. Right. I'm going to share my screen now. And can everyone see that? Put your, uh... Brilliant. Here we go. OK, well, thanks for that introduction. Yes. I am Tony Kershaw, number two speaker at uh, Calverdale Council, as Nick so um, lovely introduced me as. So, um, yeah, I've worked at Calverdale 15 years, actually 15 years last month, and uh, most of which is it's flown, particularly the last 12 months. It feels like everything happened, nothing happened, but it's gone so quickly. And, you know, as feet haven't really touched the ground, have they? um furlough what's furlough you know a lot of us have been doing everything uh you know going outside our job roles and doing all sorts of extra extra bits and pieces so it's been an extremely busy time particularly if you're in local government um so i used to work for the private sector um before i started at caldale and i worked for several years at a company called nestle or nestles and um, back then we didn't we didn't talk about CX or UX or any of those things. We just talked about really being passionate about customers and putting them at the heart of everything that we do. And uh, that's just something that I've carried on with my career at, at Calderdale uh, as, as, as sort of something that I really value. So I'm sure you've all heard of Calderdale, but if not, you will have heard of Halifax, I'm sure, um, which is our main town. And it's been put on the map by the BBC series Gentleman Jack, if you've uh, if you've watched that, and our area was really going through a resurgence in terms of tourists before the uh, the dreaded C word happened. Um, Calderdale also appears on the news every time it rains because we are prone to flooding, and I think since two thousand and six, it's pro- we've probably had some really serious floods twice a year at least that I'm aware of, um, which you know is a real shame and has been. Um, a real, real blow to us, to be honest, as a, as a district and a borough, um, but it's kept us very busy, uh, that's for sure. So, um, you know, I, I'll touch on flooding and, and just how chat, chat has helped us around flooding scenarios a bit later on in the, in the presentation. So Nick's asked me to cover a few things with you all today. Um, it was really around how the digital assistant that we've got has helped us manage demand through the pandemic. Um, but I have sort of 
uh, I will talk through a potted history of how we got from where we were to, to where we are now. And it may cover some of the things that you've all been asking about um, through the, the previous presentation, which is obviously mainly around the discovery and the, and the user research. So mine will talk more about the, the physical, the actual implementation and, and how that's gone for us. There'll be loads of questions, I suspect, and we might not get around to answering a lot of them today, but I can speak to any of you about um, anything with regards to metrics, how we've measured our success, return on investment stuff, implementations, customer research. There'll be a whole host of things that I won't get time to cover in detail, but I'm really happy to speak to anybody about outside of this, um, this Zoom call. So, um, yeah, well, I'll move on. I mean, what we've done, it's not perfect by any stretch, but it's a million miles away from, from where we were. Um, so just to put things into context, in 2013 and 14, when we sort of started looking at, at channel shift and really putting some measures as to where, where we were and where we wanted to go, um, 70% of, of people were contacting us by by phone at that point. We were getting about four million pounds paid online, about 150 online forms, which, you know, was pretty good going, um, but most of those weren't integrated. So most of them were just coming through as an email and then some poor soul was having to sit and key them onto a back office system. So it looked okay for the customer, but wasn't very efficient or great for our team. And we were getting about a million unique web visits um, so I know people me measure web visits in all sorts of different ways. We just deal with unique web visits because it's a stat that we've always used and, and it's, seen, it's a constant. So that's the one that we stick with. So it wasn't the worst position to be in, uh, but there was lots of room for improvement. And customers were clearly happy to go online. We knew that from our analytics and from speaking to customers. Um, but it wouldn't take much for them to channel hop. So I think, you know, we, we've already touched on this earlier that if you're not quickly getting the information that you're looking for, you'll reach out, you, you'll go down other, other methods. Not only that, if you're not getting the answer that you want through one channel, you'll try a few different ones to see if you get a different answer. And that's what we were experiencing, uh, probably still do to some extent, but to a lesser extent than we did back then. Um, we had a look at web chat. We were offered it by the, our CRM provider, who was Oracle, um, at a really reasonable cost. So we had a chat with other councils and to see who were embarking on this journey. Leads were fairly, um, you know, down the road with using chat. And so we, we went over there and we had a look at how they were using it and the, the successes they were having with it. And it just became apparent to us that it would be something that we could implement fairly quickly and fairly cheaply for us, and uh, but would have huge benefits. And the main one for us at that time was that it would support the customer to stay online. So we never really wanted to view it as, a, as, a, as another channel. We really wanted it as a support for people who were already online. And that's how we, we were viewing it. So in little over two years, so by about 16, 17, um, there was a really big shift in how customers were transacting with us and some really significant savings as a result of that. So many of you were probably working through similar improvement programs at the time. It seems that we, you know, we go on these journeys together, um, even though we're at different points in, in those. Um, and you'll know that it's not easy and it really requires some tenacity, tenacity and some perseverance with your stakeholders, with your customers, with your teams. It's a tough old, tough old uh, job to get to where you want to be. And our chat for, uh, function certainly evolved over the years. So Caldwell Council was an, an early implementer of the 24-7 chat solution. Um, and that's something that really helped flatten our Monday peak, particularly around email. So we do get a lot of chat coming through out of hours when our team isn't there. Um, and we have an out of hours team that, that look after those. And it was also becoming, it was a really good tool for business continuity, uh, really around emergency situations. So a great example of this would be the floods. Flooding always seems to happen in very unsociable hours. Um, 2015, it was Boxing Day when it decided to absolutely sail it down for um, a period of 48 hours and, and absolutely devastate our borough. 
but having a, a chat solution meant that you know people who had laptops at home could just get straight on at home that you know it was it was a really good good tool for us to have um so we we, we could really use it um anytime any place anywhere really um so and it really opened up our availability for responding to customers so by march last year pre-pandemic only around about 30 percent of our contact was over the phone and less than seven percent was in person and the rest was made up uh, of chat web visits and, and online forms and i do really believe and still do that um implementing a, a chat solution and having that real-time dialogue with with customers about their online journey and acting on their feedback has made a significant difference to our channel shift program in 2018 we worked with uh, connect assist to implement oracle's virtual assistant um, as it was known at the time and we ran a competition to name it and we had some really funny and creative and sometimes rude suggestions but in the end we went with vera and that stands for virtual interactive responsive assistant um, it's also quite a northern thing because we talk about our vera like on coronation street so we, we quite like um, the name vera for her and um really the, the key and, and some i think somebody's touched on this earlier um with regards to sort of doing the research side we didn't do a discovery program and user research like has just been described um so eloquently before me but we did do we did spend a lot of time on, on research so i'll talk a little bit about what we did there and, and how we used customer insight so really getting it set up properly is where you're going to get the, the value and spending the time on that is really worthwhile and what we did is we created a set of intents so an intent is something that is like a group of different questions that might ask the same thing so for example the intent might be help with my cancel tax but include the questions things like i can't pay my cancel tax i'm struggling to pay my cancel tax i need help with my rates so bundling all those things up into one thing that gives you a, gives you a static answer and um, I've got an insight team and they used emails and existing tran chat transcripts to review how customers contact us about council tax because that's what we were going with first. That's what we were, it was quite a risky strategy, but we were using the chatbot to, um, to deal with our council tax queries first. So by using the emails and the existing chat transcripts that we had stored in the system, that gave us an indication of the dialect that people use, the, the names that people use. So people to still refer to council tax as poll tax, for example. Um, so we, we did we spent a lot of time looking through those things to, to be able to pull together um, a set of a set of intents and questions that customers might ask us. And we looked at the language that they used and you, you know the phrases. Um, and it was really important that we did that because otherwise, uh, like was touched on by Lewis and Neil, um, it will certainly fail if you're not able to, if, if, if the bot isn't able to respond because it doesn't understand what's being asked of it, then you're just setting yourself self up for a fall really. Um, so it, I've, even though I've not gone into massive detail around that user research that we did, we did do more, much more than what I've described. It's just that for the purposes of today, I'm just going to keep it brief. So we launched Vera in March 2019, specifically for council tax to help manage demand around the annual billing. So um, I forgot, I've made a few notes from earlier about people asking and asking things and about how it might help with, with these peaks and troughs in demand. So this is one thing that we identified it, it for and um, because we've got because we'd already had chat on our website for quite some time and customers were quite used to using it they were quite happy to use the chatbot really um it does identify itself as a as a chatbot um so you do know that you are that is what you who you are speaking to and the way that it's rooted is is that on our front end we've got a 
a drop down where what do you want to talk to us about today and if the person chooses council tax if the customer chooses council tax they will be presented with the bar and then we've got certain mechanisms in place so if the customer says i want to speak to a human or if the a couple attempts at conversation fail that call will be escalated then to a to an actual advisor who's managing chat so to a human person and it'll take the history of the conversation through with it so that the customer's not having to repeat themselves we'll be able to easily get a gist of what it was that they wanted um so when we went live with it like i say people were, were, were using it and really it was answering around 70 percent of of things correctly without escalating to a human and that sort of showed that we the work that we've done in terms of the customer insight and the user research was was quite you know was really good obviously we could improve it i think you know if we can get to like golden 80 percent that people talk about the 8 to 20 thing then we would have been happy with that so for the first sort of few weeks and months we did tweak the content um i think lewis said earlier about making sure that you know what you've got is is right and it's putting that time and investment into into tweaking it to make sure that it is suitable for your customers to use and that they are going to use it so we did spend some time doing that so as as the months went on we did feel fairly confident that we could use it for waste and recycling now we've already talked about waste and recycling yes um it may seem that it's not an emotive topic but believe me until you've spoken to somebody about a bin that's been missed two weeks in a row um you know that it, it is a very emotive thing that people do get the knickers in a twist about because they see it as the one thing that they get in their um that they get for the council tax so that you know they do get they do get quite um, quite emotional about it uh so we did spend some time sort of looking at again doing the research into the emails and the chat transcripts listening to phone calls doing a lot of testing internally and externally to make sure that we that we got this one right and we wanted to sort of do this um around the christmas period to help with demand that naturally comes at christmas usually because of bad weather or um, bank holidays and things like that, disruptions to service so um we went live hoping that it didn't cause more issues than it solved and um we tied it in with a marketing campaign where we uh, we sort of did a launch around something along the lines of ask vera if you can recycle your christmas card and, and things like that so um, all the things that we get asked at christmas anyway you know what what can we do with us christmas trees will you take my extra tins and cans because we've been having a right good session over christmas all those sorts of things and by this time i'd also recruited a digital advisor and their their primary role was to monitor the exchanges with customers and do these tweaks and amendments where, where they were necessary so that was a bit of a journey up until sort of march um i know it's i know i've kind of rushed through some things and, and no doubt you'll have some questions around that but um you know really i was asked to talk about what what we did during the pandemic and, and helping demand there so like everyone else in this virtual room we knew that the that there would be a big increase from customers um and it wouldn't be long before there'd be people in financial difficulty or they would need assistance through our volunteer schemes or, or, or they had questions around other support that they would be able to get and as well as our, as that we had our leisure centers closing our theaters closing disruptions to our waste service and just really all the things that we had to react to um, in terms of Boris's uh, daily, weekly, monthly announcements. So quite often he'd be announcing some scheme on a, on a Monday that we had very limited notice for, but customers were expecting that by that next day, they would be able to apply for a business grant. They would be able to apply for isolation payments and, and all those sorts of things. So on top of that, we obviously had our face to face offices closed. So demand was going to increase through other channels naturally anyway. And even though our contact centre, 60% of them were already set up to work from home, 
we had to um we had to get other people we had to get kit and and, and other things um set up for them and that didn't happen overnight if anyone else was in the same position you'll know that every man and his dog wanted laptops so you know supply was 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 very limited and there were long delays on deliveries for those so uh, straight away we thought right well our digital assistant can definitely help with the demand here and really mean that the skilled advisors that we did have, have on the phone um, could deal with the the more complex issues and some of the new issues that customers were experiencing um you know that and that the digital assistant would be able to deal with the the lower value contact that was that was more uh, simple for it to deal with and it's really been a joined up effort between the web team and comms and customer services so i think it's been already touched on about customers will use different channels to get the answers that they want and you, you need that consistency in your responses so we made sure that we all linked up and that anything that was going out on social media didn't contradict information that we might be giving out on the website or giving out via the, the human chat or via the, the digital assistant um, chatbot. And um, we created some brand new intents. So things specifically around COVID and we were able to amend ones that we already had in the system. So if it was something that somebody was asking about council tax, we might have already had an intent there that would be able to help them. So with regards to like council tax redu reduction, for example, so when we just put in the words COVID and coronavirus in to those like, intents to just expand them to be able to respond to that, um, those are the questions that we were getting from customers. And again, these were closely monitored by our digital advisor um, who was able to amend uh, and add, delete, intents and responses as required so it's quite important for me to say at this point that the digital assistant that we have once it's been implemented really can be managed by operational staff it doesn't require any you know that great technical skills you don't have to have coding or, or or anything like that it can all be done op by operational people who are the best people to do it because they're able to react very quickly to, to what's going on. Um, I also manage the web team, which does make it easier because obviously they are within customer services. And what that means is, is that I'm not having to jump through hoops to, to get them to amend content or, um, or, you know, put things onto the website in response to some of the COVID announcements. It can all be done at the same time to make sure that those messages are consistent because i think you know we the one thing that we can agree on is that it, that is really important that the customers are getting that consistent and correct information um our software that we use also comes with a really good reporting dashboard and that gives us really valuable insight into how successful the exchanges with customers have been so I don't have um, a slide to show you that, um, unfortunately, but I can speak with people after this about how we monitor those exchanges and, and what prompts us to make those tweaks and amendments that I've talked about um, and making sure that there's that consistency in place. It is a continuous review process. You know, I think Neil said about having a team of people working on this and the importance of that. Yes, it is really important it's not something that you can necessarily automate um so you know you do need some dedicated resource for this which is something that you obviously have to consider in your business cases if that's the route that you're considering going down um but we still see it as something that's that's really fundamental and, and, and critical to supporting our customers online one good thing um that's come out of it which probably will make some if the user research people on this call uh, think, oh God, no, uh, but we've not had to go through these really long implementation and testing um, sort of experiences that we might have done uh, before the pandemic. So we've just been doing things really quickly, the putting things on in real time and really the testing is being done with customers but because it's such a, an adaptive system and, and, the, and the product's so agile 
we don't feel that that's been a great detriment to the customer experience. We are able to make updates to the system really quickly. So it's not been a massive problem for us. And it is something that will make us rethink how we do do implementations going forward. And do we need all that time for um, sort of the, the testing and the evaluation in certain circumstances? That, you know, that might not always be necessary. So somebody asked earlier about what our customers think of it. And, um, you know, we have a survey on the end of our um, our chats even if whether it's through a human chat or whether it's through a through the chat bar where customers can can give their feedback and um you know they're using it so that's a really good indicator that it's you know they like it for cows tax alone we've seen a 250 percent increase in customers who use the digital assistant to answer their queries compared to the same period uh, the previous year so that was um, that was really encouraging the most popular question getting asked um to vera is i have changed my address um which is probably no surprise to anybody that's been superseded since the pandemic by i need help with my council tax so obviously the responses in there will be around payment holidays setting up different payment arrangements it's not integrated with the, our council tax back office system i think it's important to be upfront about that at this stage it does do some signposting back to the website um, and sort of some guidance for how customers can, can apply for these things, but it won't answer account specific um, questions at this moment in time because we haven't done that integration yet. Um, we were told by our leisure centres that, that, that they would need to close and we, we were expecting that we would get a lot of contact from customers around their membership. So. We worked with the service and in less than a day we'd set up a series of, of questions and intents to respond to those inquiries which customers were more than seem more than happy to use and again 80 percent were being answered satisfactorily satisfactorily at their first point of contact and um, so yeah like i said there is a a survey at the end and you know they can give their feedback on the on the digital experience that they've had with us what we'll usually find is if they didn't get the response that they wanted, so we're not coming back within five minutes to collect their bin, they will give us a low score. Uh, but we do get um, some really good feedback, particularly from people that are grateful that they can get responses out of hours to something that they, you know, that they need to know, um, and sort of a reluctance to sort of, to engage with it with a chat box. But actually, it's been a positive experience, so you know they would use it again. I just wanted to talk briefly about my, my teams and how they've sort of embraced this world. Um, some of them have been quite suspicious about this technology in the past. Uh, you know, it's probably something that, that a few of you have experienced before this perception that robots are going to be taking over their roles. And, you know, is this a move to phase people out and, and replace them with it with a chatbot and, and AI and all those sorts of things? But to be honest, since the pandemic, they've really seen the value of, um, of Vera, our chatbot, and how if she's used effectively, it can ease pressure on their on them on them and their sanity, and leave them to deal with the more more complex things and help customers that really need to speak to somebody as opposed to something that can be done quite simply through it through a bot style. Uh, a system. So just to finish off, because I've been waffling on for ages, but since the start of the pandemic, um, Vera has had over 13,000 exchanges with customers, um, with around 80% being answered at the first point of contact. It's usually higher than that, usually sits around 83%. And through our normal web chat, we've had about 11,000 chats. So if you were looking at most of those would have happened over the phone, well, all of them probably, rather than using the bot, that's quite a lot of contact that um, we've been able to avoid and quite a lot of pressure um, avoided for a team that are already under significant, significant pressure. 
So we will be investing in this channel going forward and we're going to be shortly migrating to an improved digital assistant again through through Oracle, um, which provides a much more conversational way of interacting with uh, customers that's a lot more efficient and convenient for them. We have, did have to put some of our plans on hold because of the pandemic, but hoping to pick those things up fairly, fairly quickly. We're also doing some integration with Gov Notify so that we can take advantage of the technology there, but have it integrated through our CRM and through our, our chat um, software so that customers can get emails and, and texts, etc. Uh, and like I say, it was even though I've spoke for ages, it is quite brief um, because there's so much to cover. You know, we could talk about this all day. So if anybody does want to pick anything up with me offline, then then feel free to contact me anytime. And um, I'm quite happy to go through our journey in more detail. So that's me done. Thank you very much for listening.